So before we jump into the burn, actual burn severity monitoring, we do a quick recap about the theory. So you remember the normalized burn ratio, which is based on the near infrared and the short wave infrared. Below you see the formula. Say so you calculate it with a normalized difference function, so to say. And on the left side, you see the different degrees, like high burn severity, moderate, and low burn severity. So based on these, there is actually a classification that was made by USGS and actually the difference image, so the delta normalized burn ratio, you will get by subtracting the post image from the pre-image, which you see on top of the calculation. And below you see the classification based on the severity level as made by USGS and you see the different delta normalized burn ratio scales. So let's go back to our script and calculate the normalized burn ratio here for the pre and the post fire images. So we use the normalized difference function and we use band 8 and band 12 of the Sentinel-2. But how to know which band we have to use actually? Let's have a look at the Sentinel-2 images here. So we simply go here to bands and we already have the list here of the different bands and we see that band 8 gives us the near infrared and band 12 the short wave infrared and if you remember these are the two bands you use to calculate the normalized burn ratio. So we do this with the pre and the post fire image, just keep in mind to use the cloud masked ones. Um, you can optionally just also add these images to the console to know what's in these images. And then we calculate the difference between the pre and the post fire image. As you remember, you subtract the post fire image from the pre fire image, but from the pre fire normalized burn ratio. So you subtract the post normalized burn ratio from the post fire image from the pre-normalized burn ratio from the pre-fire image. And then actually you need to scale it again. This was also in the classification that was suggested by USGS so that you actually multiply it by 1000 here. And then you add the layers to the map. So we've already seen most of the layers when we went through the different steps. So you have here the pre-fire image and the post-fire image. Always when we put false, it's actually not directly activated when you run the script. So you can activate it here in the layers. Um, then we have the cloud mask pre and post-fire image, which were added here. We already had a look at these. And then we have a look at the burn, burn ratio product. So this is first a grayscale image, so white and black where we actually can see here the pre-fire normalized burn ratio index and the post-fire normalized burn ratio index. Then actually we also added the delta normalized burn ratio, so where we subtracted the post-fire from the pre-fire normalized burn ratio index. Have a look at this one as well. So this is the grayscale one. Okay, so now we actually also need to classify the burn ratio products. First we defined the intervals. You can see them here, here are the different intervals and they follow the classification of the USGS which we have seen before. And then actually we add the delta normalized burn ratio with the style we just created with the classification and call it classified here. So here we see the classified image. We can also run burn area statistics. This is just optional. 
Um, for our area here in Bolivia, it was quite large. So this is where Google Earth Engine sometimes likes to stop. But if you have smaller areas, you can easily also get um, area statistics like how much of the area is affected by which burn severity plus. Let's scroll down. The later part is actually simply about adding a legend. So what you can see here on the left and what you will see when you go through the different parts of the legend. So this is really simply adding the legend. We added the delta normalized burn ratio classes um, as defined by USGS, the classification where you can see from enhanced regrowth towards high severity. And we can really see this area in Santa Cruz district, which was highly affected. But we also added a legend for the firm's data set and for the CCI data. So where you can also see when the fires occurred, you remember that we added these two as well to our maps. So now you can also see what's the fire intensity, but also what are the different burn dates when you go in here. And also you can export the image. So this is what we added here with a file export that you can actually get the final image to your drive, for example. Okay, this was everything for the burn severity monitoring for Bolivia. And I would suggest you can also try it out for an area of your interest.